Luxury without limitations. Style without compromise. A life well lived. Welcome to Selling the Lux Life, the only radio show that seeks out and highlights the deeply authentic and genuinely meaningful, unique luxury lifestyle experiences in Orange County. Bringing new and emerging premier products and services to discerning clients and connecting the affluent customer to the finer things in life. Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Selling the Lux Life. I am Rob Gantis and we are here at Reborn Coffee. Uh, as you know, this show basically tries to really um, find things that are a little bit off the beaten path and uh, bring it to you, but we really believe that luxury isn't about the price, it's about the quality and that there should be no uh, sacrificing of that. Uh, coffee is something that we all interact with every day, whether you drink it or you know somebody who does drink it. And uh, for me, I need it because without it, I am not safe to myself or others around me. <laughs> um, and today I have these two gentlemen with me here. We are at, uh, at Reborn's uh, location in Southern California. It's a very exciting brand that's, uh, that's happening, a lot of great technology behind it. Uh, it's like it's coffee, right? Well, no, not quite. We're going to find out a little bit more about that. And so I'd like to introduce my, my guests on Selling the Lux Life today, Mr. Sun Kim and Mr. Howard No. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. <laughs> Thank you for the uh, uh, interview. Oh, well, my, my pleasure, man. It was really exciting when I found out about it. And I want to give a shout out to my uh, high school friend and buddy that I've known for way too long and yet you know, we have an agreement that nobody tells anything about background stories beyond 10 years. <laughs> so Mr. Tarek Risha, uh, who uh, introduced me to these gentlemen, actually introduced me to the brand before. He, I remember going to Tarek's house in Corona del Mar and he uh, basically said, well, I got this little thing you should might want to try. And I said, what is it? He goes, coffee. I go, coffee? You guys are all drinking bourbon and, and champagne. Why are you giving me coffee? <laughs> you know what? I didn't want the bourbon and champagne. This was much better. So tell us... Um, Tell us, son, a little bit about Reborn and um, how long it's been around. What you know, a little bit of the background story, if you will. Uh, so Reborn actually didn't start as coffee. It started with the decades of research uh, of, 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 for water. Right? Okay. So we had we have a nuclear physicist uh, who resides in, in Seoul, Korea. And his mission uh, was to figure out how to perfect water and its ability to absorb in the human body, um, improve its use for agriculture. Pretty much water is like the essence of, of all life. It's, it's, it's uh, what ev every living form needs to... Needs to uh, yeah, the human body is mostly composed right. of water. And, and, and I think I've heard about this. I, 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 do, I do wellness and, and spas a lot, and we mm -hmm. talk about... You know the you know oxygenated water. We talk about you know the the the. It, I know people that basically drink Pedialyte and electrolytes, and you know and if you if you think about athletes, they're basically I know it's mostly sugar. But at one point when it first started, Gatorade was supposed to be like sort of a replenishment right. thing, right? So liquids are a very important. Water is the purest you can have it, but it doesn't mean that all water is equal, right? Especially with the way modern life is and other things that impact our natural sources of water, right? So this process that you're talking about, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about sure. that? Sure. It's a patented process. So after about 20 years of, I think about two decades of research, um, he figured out how to, because everyone's adding stuff to their water and, and, you know, instead of adding stuff, his idea was to uh, improve it, its molecular properties. Mm -hmm. So he designed this uh, magnetic process, um, a device that the water runs through. And then at, at the end comes out what we call nano water. It's uh, the clusters have been broken down into nano clusters, much smaller than you know, typical water. So uh, hydration is, is far improved, and he's, he's got we've got like scientific documents just you know showing all the readings of, right. of the water. So with with that water, um, he applied it to the second uh, love of his life, which was coffee. <laughs> uh, studying the bean, uh, the the characteristics, the properties of the coffee bean, the beautiful notes that are found in each unique origin. Mm -hmm. you know, every, every, because wherever coffee grows, it's a different elevation, there's gonna be a different terroir. It's just like wine, it right. takes on a different characteristics, right. yeah. Right, 
So like if there's blueberries that are naturally growing around in that terroir, it's like the, the coffee also is going to pick up those notes. If there's strawberries, whatever it is, right. uh, coffee does retain uh, very unique notes and the, and the elevation also plays a huge role. So you're going to get like, let's say Ethiopia, which is grown at higher elevation, mm -hmm. um, is, is going to be much more fruit forward. It's, it's, it's brighter, it's, it's, it's more playful. And then uh, people tend to really love the Ethiopian beans. And then you, mm -hmm. get, you get South America, which you know, a lot, a lot more um, at different elevation also. Um, warm, nutty undertones, you get like really strong chocolatey notes. Uh, I mean, so there, there are a lot of things. Even in Kenya, they, mm -hmm. they, ha they fit, found a, a coffee bean that uh, resembles, uh, there's, there's a tomato note in there. So it, it, people are, you know, really figuring out that, you know, coffee isn't just coffee. There, it drinks like a fine wine. Well, and, and, and what's interesting is, we, you know, we're talking about the water, water, water table. It, it, it really, you can, you can think about it in terms of the roots basically all feeding into the same ecosystem so there's cross filtration there's stuff that's shared in sure. that environment uh, yeah no I, I totally I totally get it uh, the one thing I wanted to ask about the water so that, so you actually had what you were talking about was like basically reborn water right to begin with right right and so that is that yeah that is a big thing these days i'm on just the quality of water and what you basically drink i mean you know i i like to drink a lot of water and i thought i was doing great because i was just drinking filtered water right right but just drinking enough of it right and then somebody basically told me well it's actually not really good for you to drink a lot of water just as water right because at some point you could actually almost like have a toxicity from drinking toxicity. too much water and so the quality of the water is equally important and Yes, anybody who drinks coffee understands the critical importance of water in the process. Absolutely. So, so what? So, with these beans that you're talking about, what uh, do you guys do? You guys have all of those beans as part of your offering now with Reborn, or uh, do you specialize in certain beans? Or? Um, so, we actually uh, we're really good with the Ethiopian bean. <laughs> there, there's so much, so many possibilities for us to you know uh, produce just a world class product with the Ethiopian. Okay. I mean, same with the other beans, but particularly with the Ethiopia, um, we source from uh, Sidamo Guji, um, that particular bean, and we figured out how to blend it with, uh, it's called Cochere. Mm -hmm. uh, that particular blend is what is just outrageous. And is this what we're drinking today? Uh, that one is going to be our Valencia blend. That's kind of our house blend. Okay. It's, 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 it's fabulous. And, and I don't have, I don't usually put anything in my coffee and, and a lot of times I find that what is out there is either too diluted and too weak, or it is actually way too bitter and over roasted. Yep. And so, uh, then this is really, really a joy to drink today. Uh, okay, so talk about talk. So, so how long has Reborn been around as as a company with a coffee offering? I'd say like solid three years. Um, I mean, we've been in research and development even before that. So um, I, the idea of this reborn concept of cafes, the, the coffee products, has been around for you know five years. But you know we've been really a business and we've opened up stores uh, for about the three three years, solid three years. Yeah. And where do you have your stores right now? Uh, currently, we have one in Brea. That's our flagship store, um, and then it's a little bit east of the Brea Mall. And then mm -hmm. we have one in Glendale, mm -hmm. um, and then the a third one that's opening up at the end of. Uh, January, which is uh, in Corona del Mar, off of PCH. Yeah, I, I, I drove by there, um, excited to see that uh, come come in. It's the closest one to me. Right. Where's the one in Glendale? It's on Foothill Boulevard. It's actually like borderline. Uh, it's La Crescenta. La Crescenta. Um, it's right off of Foothill. Uh, it's right off the, the 210. So, so you guys are both obviously coffee drinkers. Yep. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I just want to add, yeah. you know, the three years that we've been operational, uh, even though we're a small startup company, um, we want to be humble, but at the same time, we, we did win America's Best Cold Brew two years in a row. Thank you for thank you for mentioning. <laughs> no, yeah, no, thank you for mentioning that, Howard. And and, and I, I I do want to also emphasize that the technology you're talking about isn't necessarily so you guys are perfecting it, but the idea behind that technology has been around a long time, and and the fact that you guys shared. The, your R and D sort of, if you will, uh, prior to actually rolling out the brand, it speaks volumes because I find a lot of people basically rush to market, yep. and they don't really do that, and it really their 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 product and their brand suffers later because they're trying to like they're 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 building the plane while it's while they're trying to fly, rather than basically do the the, the yep. legwork in advance, and it, it shows it really does. 
uh, especially in a very competitive market. This is a very Absolutely. competitive market, right? Um, anything else, Howard, that you'd like to add? Um, you know, I, I know that we we highlighted the, the water, uh, the source of the bean, uh, but truly, just to go back to the water, um, the water that we use, you know, it doesn't matter what type of coffee bean um, that that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that whether it's from you know a lesser origin or a higher origin, we're gonna pretty much you know, extract um, the highest notes that that particular bean mm -hmm. uh, could possibly yield. Uh, so that this water is pretty much elevating um, any coffee bean regardless. that is regardless. Pre premiumizing, you know, we could premiumize less premium beans. Mm -hmm. uh, we could bring out those notes. And so by, by putting it through the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Especially with production uh, of any, any resource of this nature is scarce sometimes. Yes. And so sometimes you have to basically either go, I mean, in fact, that's what happens sometimes with the blending is that they basically got small production of certain things that are high grade and they blend them with other stuff to get a little more volume out of it. And that's where the product potentially could start risking quality. And so this is, this is, this is pretty huge as far as the technology goes. I, I totally get that. What are your, um, what are your hopes with this brand? I mean, what, do you have any projections as far where you'd like to see yourselves in five years? Are you well, on when, every corner, or what, what, what are we thinking? Well, there, there's the retail side, there's the product side, there's, there's you know, wholesale distribution. There, there are so many things, B2B, B2C. Um, I mean, so when Howard and I, we both came on board, um, we started, you know, trying to figure out what is our, what is our true story? What? We have to try to figure out what coffee was first. What, what coffee was first. <laughs> what, what the, why this coffee, why we do what we do here, that's what we had to figure out. But more importantly, like, um, when we came on board, we're, we just thought, okay, we're, we're opening up stores, we have an amazing product, but as we started uncovering the beauty yeah. of what this technology does, I mean, we can even say, like, this, it doesn't even have to be coffee. Mm -hmm. it can be, Reborn water. Has your water been reborn? Has your juice been reborn? Have, I was going to actually, I was going to actually tell you if that. you actually had. I would like to try the reborn water. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll I mean, I mean, because I'll tell you, we're 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 opening a medical spa right now in, in Newport Coast, mm -hmm. and one of the things that is basically being used to differentiate this particular location is glass bottled water that is being basically processed in a right. certain way in, from a look it's almost like it's almost like a microbrewery right. or or you know like a craft beer place right. and it, like there's an interest in that kind of stuff and so i can imagine that yes the coffee absolutely get me hit me with that at first thing in the morning but then i'm going to want a lot of water for the rest of the day right. um that that's pretty cool what what uh, so so what what Future what, plans? Yeah, I mean that's that's almost um, sounds like it's open ended. We, we love opening up stores because we, we really like to bring <clears throat> the community together uh, through our stores. Uh, we like to you know we want to become the cornerstone of every community because coffee, food, um, all of that. I mean it's it's not only a necessity but it shouldn't just be a necessity. It right. should be something that's really truly enjoyed. Um, people break bread, people drink coffee. They have. So there's dates. a social component. A social component, right? So yep. we have stores. Um, so we, we do have an idea of uh, launching a franchise with our stores, um, but I think there's also another component. We, we can also process uh, beans and work with farms and farmers um, to really put them on the spotlight, yeah, the, the lesser known farmers, to be. Mm -hmm. right? Um, to process those beans and, and mm -hmm. allow for them. And that's, that could be our sustainability story too. I mean, yeah. you know, there, there are these farms that, that aren't recognized as, as much as some of, the, some of the big farms that everybody knows about. And what if we could premiumize their beans, run it through a process so they could sell it at a higher dollar per pound or whatever it is? Well, let, 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 me, let me mention this to you, son. And, 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 and I, I would suggest everybody goes to the, the Reborn Coffee website. What's the website? Uh, RebornCoffee.com. RebornCoffee.com. Can't forget that. It's easy, yeah. right? But go check it out because I actually was very impressed. And I mentioned this to this gentleman here when I first walked in. Read the content, okay? Every, every website has about us and mission and all this stuff. Okay, take the time to read this because I actually, in my, and I consider myself jaded, okay, but I basically, I basically really enjoyed reading it because, because it is very interesting the way that they are very candid, they're very open, they're very real, and the, the things that are meaningful to them, yes, they have an amazing product they have an amazing process it is almost open-ended where they where they choose to go with it and I can't wait to see what they do with it and what that journey looks like but there's a really a soul to their bit to their business there is a um, 
there's a diversity factor that's important to them, there's a social component, investment in community that's important to them, and it comes through. If you read between the lines, and they will tell you in certain parts, that is very much evident. And so it's not just me drinking a cup of coffee, I'm drinking something that has a meaning and something behind it, and hopes and aspirations that include a social component where they're like just like was just uh, Sandra was just sharing where you know you go to a smaller farm or something like that and you're elevating you know it's it's like almost like that rising tide raises all boats kind of thing so please check that out and uh, we're gonna take a break and when we come back we'll have a surprise for you Selling the Lux Life, I'm Rod Gantis, and we are here in a different location this time. I told you there'd be a surprise, right? And uh, right now, I've got uh, Sun with me, and I've got Jacob with me here. And we, where are we, Sun? Uh, we're at the flagship uh, Reborn uh, Retail Coffee Shop in, in Brea, California. In Brea, California. It's a great, great space. I love it. It's got a great vibe. And we want to cover a couple of things here. I want to start off with, tell me a little bit about the concept for the store and how you basically kind of... You mentioned it on the website, and again, let's give people the website to follow up on. I mean, what's, what's the website? Uh, uh, RebornCoffee.com. Re RebornCoffee.com. So go check out the website. There's a lot of information on there. And if you're just joining us, uh, there's stuff about the process that we covered in the first part of this episode that uh, is really, really cool stuff, so you should find out about it. Uh, when you, this is your flagship store. Um, how long has it been open? Uh, about a year and a half. A year and a half. How's it been? It gets been taken out. It gets yeah, taken out. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about this because yeah, there's a coffee shop on every corner, right? When you guys put together the idea of having a retail location, what was your approach? Well, the, the of course we want to share our our coffee, our technology with, with the world, and we start by you know having a place where the community can get really involved. It's a place like education uh, about coffee. It's a big place that people can meet, have a date. Yeah. Uh, uh, just trying to be the cornerstone of, of well, whatever community we're in, but also bringing like a, a ultra premium, um, accessible uh, uh, coffee products to you know, communities that don't necessarily have like ultra specialty coffee. Uh, I mean, we could we could easily open up a shop in LA, right? We'll have San Francisco, but you know, around every street corner, there's there's some sort of third way of uh, coffee shop. So. Uh, I, we feel like, you know, suburban areas um, like Brea, uh, Corona del Mar, uh, the beach community, uh, Glendale, you know, those are all uh, areas where you know, people, people do need to see uh, what we do. Uh, well, to, to, you know, to your point, it's, it's outside, of the shot, uh, outside of the shot, but right across the way is actually residential units. It's what's interesting to me is I'm sitting here looking out of this, and what I'm looking at is a coffee shop in the neighborhood. Right, with actually people just walking down to the coffee shop, almost like a little downtown zone. So right. you could have easily put this in a in a, in a, a retail you know strip mall. You could have put it in a in a, in a mall. Um, you might down the road you know, do a kiosk concept. I think you guys are talking about possibly too. But I like the fact that you you are anchoring your culture, company culture, and and your selection of location is right in line with what you were talking about before. Right. Right. So, um, well, it's like you said, you know, we, we want to be really community-based. Um, and there's a, a lot of, like, built in like, families and uh, regulars that come in. That's, like, the whole point, you know. I, I feel like the coffee is, is community. You know? Well, and, and I think for anybody, there's a culture around coffee, right? There's a culture around, so you were saying, the social component. 
And so, again, a place that everybody knows your name, if you're a local and you know, all things being local, it's sort of important. You were saying, Jacob, you're telling me that it gets busy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it has a lot to do with like the, the time of year, you know, once it starts to get even like a little bit cold, you know, it, it's coffee weather. Uh, but we've also started to, we've gotten a little bit of a reputation with yeah. cold brew of the year, two years in a row now. Uh, which is a pretty, yeah, that's the <laughs> Great <one>. cold brew. <laughs> Amazing cold brew. Um, so we've literally had people come from out of state, like, just to try it, which has been super humbling and really, really cool. Wow. Out of state. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which is, uh... So if you're in the state of California, two things you need to do, in and out burgers and cold brew every morning. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Yeah, in that order. Yeah. Well, you, you leave the, the best for last. Yeah. That's why it's the best order. Um, <laughs> besides, I think I'd like to have the reborn flavor in my mouth last longer than the, 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 the in and out Oh, yeah. No, 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 not king in and out I love in and out Well, after you've had a giant burger too, you're feeling a little sluggish, you need some Right, caffeine. you need a little bit. Yeah. Re- it, I'm not kidding. This is a really, really great um, cold brew. And they have nitros here, too, so I plan. Uh, so, what do we have here, though? Because this is really interesting. So tell me about this. So this is our reborn pour over pack. It's um, it's really for those who are on the go who don't really have a lot of time to well, whether you're jet set or I, I, know, I know nobody like that. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, you can have fancy gear, but I think um, there has to be a coffee delivery system that's easily disposable, but also uh, just convenient. And, and good coffee should be convenient. So. Uh, we've actually, this is a Japanese technology that we sourced and we brought here. It comes in these little packs. Um, and inside these packs, is, uh, it's a little bag like this. Then you just tear off the, tear off the top. And it's, it's already pre-dosed with uh, our Reborn coffee grinds. And you place the anchors on the cup. That's amazing. Yeah, so it gives you the pour over, uh, the, that pour over experience. Yeah. Um, I take it camping. Um, I, I travel quite a bit, so if I'm on a plane, no. there is no airline with really good coffee. <laughs> so just ask for hot water and, and you're good to go. So that, that's, that's all it is. I mean, yeah. the, whole, the whole package, everything is you don't need any holder, any uh, uh, plastic, any washable component. It's just totally disposable. Right. The, the, the dosage is already measured for easy, you. Easy I, I, I waste coffee all the time. You know, when I, I, I like, oh, I'm going to fresh grind my coffee every morning, which I do on yeah. fresh French press. But there's always, oh, I could always either do too much or yeah. too little, you know, and, and I, I drink coffee every day and I still don't have it right. So this is good coffee, mate. This is exactly what we're trying to do. Is, I'm just curious, is there a temperature that you, are, you, should, you should use for coffee? Uh, for water? hot water? Yeah. yeah, well, especially with like a pour over, you want to keep it 200 degrees. Yeah. Um, you know, that's I, I just want to show that. So that's, this is why I'm asking, because there's okay. actually a, a temp- thermometer on here between my fingers. You see it. Yeah. It's on top of this kettle that they basically do. So what's the temperature? Uh, 200 degrees, and so that actually has to do a lot with like how solid it is. We, we recommend if you're at home, you don't have a temp- like a thermometer. Um, if you boil water, it's like at a rolling boil, just uh, once it's done, you just let it sit for without any flame for about 20 to 30 seconds so that it kind of gets back down to, this is usually about 212 degrees when it's like boiling. Boil. Yeah. So you want to get it down to like 200. So just let it sit um, about for 20, 30 seconds before you do your pour. And what Jacob's doing right now, um, the first pour, uh, poured about halfway. Uh-huh. And that allows the coffee to bloom. So it, it breathes. And, Gas is kind releases of releases the CO2, releases the CO2, and then once that drains, then you fill it two or three times. It really depends on how diluted or uh, you want your coffee, how strong you want it to taste. Uh, but so, so it's actually okay to do that. Like, like it's, it's you could actually pour more in there. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, I by the way, I love the terminology bloom. I mean, you, you guys think coffee bloom? You just found out from Sunday <laughs> coffee bloom, right? And you, did you know that you should be 200 degrees, uh, you know, and how do you get to be 200 degrees, take it off, let it sit? I, I, I didn't know that. I, I thought I knew, I, I thought I was a snob where it came to coffee. We're used to just, you know, putting, putting in a filter in the morning, dosing the coffee, pushing a button, and then your machine just there, There's coffee. snobs and then there's nerds too, where I think we're like, 
Yeah, but where the coffee. Oh, I, I, I feel like I just got dissed, actually. <laughs> I, mean, I just got the snob instead of a nerd. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of twisted on many levels, right? Yeah. But I will tell you, I, I'll tell you, the funny thing about this is, yeah. I, I, I joked about it in the earlier segment where I said, you know, before my coffee in the morning, I'm not safe to myself or others around yeah. me. Okay. <laughs> so, to your point, half the time, part of the reason why I'm either putting too much coffee in there or whatever is I'm not even awake. And so this actually takes the guesswork out of it completely. I just open this thing, I put it in, and, and, and I, I'm actually astounded that you guys are continuing. I know the container is large, so we're trying to, but I'm astounded that the quality of coffee actually will allow you to, you know, to pour more. It's the third pour that you put in there. That's fascinating. I can't wait to try that. I, I do want to try it yeah. 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 because, because you would think third pour, it's all diluted by now. I mean, you saw the bag. It's not a very big bag, right? right. Yeah, it's three. Yeah, that's, that's, the third, that's the third one. And I'm looking at it, and I'm watching it from the top. You guys can't see it, but you can tell from the coloration that it's actually pretty... So, yeah, so let me try that, if I can. So there you go. See, the whole thing is, is, is disposable, biodegradable. Right. So here I am. I'm going to try this. Good. That's really good. Ethiopian. Yeah, that's the Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, they're both Ethiopian, actually, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the cold brew. Amazingly refreshing. Amazingly refreshing. Taste no bitterness in it at all. It's just really smooth. This one here. Wow, that's really good. I, I can go back and forth between the two of them very easily. Uh, so, gentlemen, thank you so so much for spending time with us. Thank you. And sharing the passion that you guys have for Reborn. This is really a very cool brand. You guys should be aware of it. It's luxury in a cup, in a glass, whatever way you want. And so thanks for joining us for this episode of Selling the Lux Life. We will see you again with some more exciting news and uh, exciting guests as we roll out more and more of these episodes. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Son, it's really a pleasure. Thanks, Rob. We'll be back with some more exciting episodes real soon. Thank you for joining us this week on Selling the Lux Life. We hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback via email on our social media platforms. Be sure to tune in next time as we continue discussing life's luxuries that inspire us while showcasing members of the Orange County community that share our same passion for sophisticated living.